Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, Frankfurt United Methodist Church, and Mokina United Methodist Church merged together. I ask that you center yourself, take a deep breath, focus on the power of the divine coming into your life today as we journey through this daily devotion together. Friends, hear the affirmation. An understanding mind gains knowledge. The ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Proverbs 18, 15. Will you join me in an attitude of prayer? O God, the source of all understanding, wisdom, and knowledge, instill within us discerning hearts and minds that we may come to know your plan for our lives. May we trust in your will and walk boldly with confidence the path you have set before us this day and always. Amen. Friends, our theme is discernment. How do we discern God's will? How do we know what God is calling us to do? How do we know how our lives can be transformed? That's the question we've been asking. And we're going to today read from Stephen Dodery's and Marjorie Thompson's The Way of Discernment, another good resource if you're looking to dig deeper into this topic. Discernment calls us in our own deep yearnings. It beckons as a pathway we can take in response to these yearnings. Discernment comes to us as a gift, pure and simple. Seeing discernment as a gift puts all our efforts in perspective. Yes, we follow certain counsels of wisdom and we seek to discern. We engage in specific processes, take particular steps. From one angle of vision, we rightly see discernment as a pathway or a method, yet That method cannot guarantee that, with sufficient personal effort, we will arrive at clarity. It is not even a pathway we take accompanied by God so that we may, with a bit of help, attain a sharper vision. We take the pathway simply and solely to prepare ourselves to receive the gift of discernment, however and wherever it comes. Mm, Powerful words from the way of discernment. Again, this takes a little bit of rewiring because our culture teaches us that you you work hard and you earn something. And, And that's not true. And it's not Christian. And it's it's the lie that we've all bought into, right? That you work hard. I mean, that's the American dream. You work hard. And, and, and there was a time and a place that that worked out for some people. And, and that's gone. We have to live with that. But we know there's a better truth. Because it never always worked for everyone. And there's a lot of luck. And even for the people that it did, the idea that, that you know, I, I've heard these, these, these statements and these, these you know, uh, people, self-made people, right? But you didn't make the byways and the highways and the infrastructure and, 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 and everyone's supported by someone or something. And, and most people who are successful are supported by their parents or grandparents or other people, right? And, and even those who are not, there's, there's some luck. You know, you, you got like your, uh, your Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, those guys that were in their garage working on computers, but there were people come before them, the Wright brothers. You know, we, we went and saw, uh, the Wright brothers museum at Kitty Hawk. And then we were at the Smithsonian. So we saw all the Wright brothers stuff, uh, except we didn't go to Dayton, Ohio, where they were born, where the bicycle shop is someday we'll go there and we'll have the whole Wright brothers experience, uh, the first in flight, right? They built upon a legacy of other people who had tried and and they also built upon the natural world. They didn't create it from themselves, even though they were the ones that did it. They were building upon everyone else and everything else and the gifts that God gave them because none of us created this world. And it's like that with grace. You can't earn God's grace. You can't earn forgiveness. You can't earn salvation. And it's like that with discernment. You can't will yourself to knowing the right decision. You can open yourself to it and receive it and follow it. It's a gift. It's a gift. Open yourself to it. Our uh, scripture today comes from 
John chapter 8, starting in verse 12. Well, I'm in John chapter 12. Let me do a quick edit. <laughs> there we go. That's better. John chapter 8, starting in verse 12. That will be make more, more sense to us. Jesus spoke to the people again, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me won't walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Then the Pharisees said to him, because you are testifying about yourself, your testimony isn't valid. Jesus replied, even if I testify about myself, my testimony is true, since I know where I came from and where I am going. You don't know where I come from or where I'm going. You judge according to human standards, but I judge no one. Even if I do judge, my judgment is truthful because I'm not alone. My judgments come from me, from the Father who sent me. In your law, it is written that the witness of two people is true. I am one witness concerning myself. The Father who sent me is the other. They asked him, where is your father? Jesus answered, you don't know me. You don't know my father. If you knew me, you would also know my father. He spoke these words while he was teaching in the temple area known as the treasury. No one arrested him because his time hadn't come. God bless the reading of the gospel today. Uh, it, uh, we, we, again, we can, we can just say, oh man, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the, like anybody in the story, uh, we, we can just get down on them and say, oh man, they just didn't get it. But this is again, our story. Never, never take yourself out of this story. Here are the Pharisees, good religious people, faithful church-going people, people who knew their Bible, people who tried to do good, to, to live justice and mercy. And Christ was in their midst and they didn't see God. Christ, the, the image of the invisible God, and they didn't see God. They were blind to it. Why? Because the same thing that we are blind to, because we think we know the best way. We think we are the life and the truth. As Jesus says, I am the light of the world. We think we are the light of the world. We think we are the center of the world. We think our opinion is the most valid. Instead of saying, Lord, let me see your light. Let it shine through me so others can see you through me. Whoever follows me won't walk in darkness. We can choose to walk in darkness. We can choose to be blind. So many, even Christians, the vast majority of people who call themselves Christian or identify as Christian are asleep. The Wesley brothers uh, discerned that hundreds of years ago. And many other Christians have throughout the generations. Just because you call yourself Christian, just because you go to church, just because you're a good religious person who knows your Bible doesn't mean you would see Jesus if he was in your face. Very truthfully, most of us miss Christ every single day in other people and experiences because we're too busy with ourselves or we're too prejudiced or we're too caught up in this, that, or the other thing. Discernment is about being open to that light and letting that light guide you in everything you do. Friends, today we pray intercessory prayers, prayers for others. You can use the five-finger prayer. I'll put it on the screen. That's just a great tool to help pray for others. Those closest to us, those who point us to God, those in high places, leaders, authority, those who are weak, who need our love and support, and finally yourself.
Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.